yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. And I'm trading my sorrows, and I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Trading my sickness, and I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. And I'm trading my sorrows. And I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the you glad you can trade your sorrows tonight amen i asked them if they let me help to sing this second one it's an old one simply says give me that old time religion amen been burning on my heart today let's sing it together tonight give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that Old time religion is good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion is good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion is good enough for me makes me love everybody makes me love everybody makes me love everybody is good enough for me makes me love everybody makes me love everybody makes me love everybody is good enough for me it was good for a mother it was good for a mother's it was good for a mother's it's good enough for me give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that old time religion it's good enough for me give me that old time religion give me that old time religion give me that Old time religion is good enough for me. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our fathers. It was good for our fathers. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will do when I'm dying. 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 It will
dying, it's good enough. Oh, say that me. one again. It will do when I'm dying. It will do when I'm dying. It will do when I'm dying. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that. Old-time religion, it's good enough for me. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. It's good enough for me. again. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. It will take us all to heaven. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Will give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. Makes me love everybody. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Will give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that. Let's continue to worship together tonight. Oh, God. And I exalt. 
lift your hands toward heaven now and thank you father we love you tonight thank you for the privilege we have to be in your house thank you for the privilege we have lord to call upon you tonight as our lord as our savior as the king of kings and the lord of lords father truly we reverence your presence in your house tonight god just pray that the spirit of god will have his way lord there is none other great as you are there is none other that compared to your majesty to your power to your might, Lord. And tonight we give praise and honor and glory for who you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. The name that is above all names, we ask it tonight. His name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for the Lord tonight? Thankful for who he is. Amen. Greet your neighbor as you're seated next to them. Welcome them to the house of the Lord tonight. Tell them how good it is to see them in the house of God tonight. Amen. On what is a rainy Sunday afternoon here in Central Florida, we are thankful that you are here and glad that you got here safe. Uh, but what a nasty afternoon it has been, and we know that God knows what we need, and uh, we must have needed all that rain at 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon, 5 o'clock. So, so glad you're here with us in the house of the Lord tonight. Let me say I missed being with you. I saw some of you this morning. I got back just as the preacher was uh, dismissing church and ran into some of you in the parking lot, but I was away this morning on official business for the Church of God, and so uh, thank you, Pastor Renfro, and those that filled in spots. Um, we moved all kind of things around this morning, and uh, Sister Myra taught the adult class, and Brother Renfro preached, and and uh, I was able to take my bride with me on this one, and she went with me this morning and left Cherry on the piano and then the praise team, and some were away and some were here, and tonight others are away. Brendan and Tegan are on a ministry assignment tonight, and uh, so just that's what it's about. You know, not keeping it all inside the four walls, but sending people out to do other things. Amen? And uh, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Amen. And uh, so glad that you're here with us tonight, and uh, trust that you had a good service this morning, and uh, looking forward to what God has for us in this place. I do want to bring you up to up to speed. I asked last Sunday again that you pray for me as I met with the fire department this week, and we had a phenomenal meeting with them, 
and uh, everything is good to go it looks like we have uh, some paperwork to submit to them and uh, I'm on, can, can I ask you to pray one more time this week amen now I need the engineer to get everything put together a nice little package that I can deliver to them the sooner the better amen so I uh, ask that he will take care of that and uh, get us on the right track and uh, hopefully in the coming days uh, they'll be able to finish that process and uh, get us headed to where we need to go if you've been on campus you've noticed that uh, maybe you noticed they did move the power pole out back and some of you have not even noticed that some of you parked back there and still didn't notice that uh, but they have moved the power pole to prepare for the buildings to arrive and uh, we're so thankful for that and thankful for what God is doing and uh, just continue to pray for favor if that's God's will that's what we want and uh, we're looking forward to that tonight I believe uh, brother Roger and sister Jane have landed in Orlando they're supposed to land at 5 11 I think was the time I said that to say this I did not get the text message uh, I was in church and I didn't realize that she'd sent me a text but uh, she did send me one on Wednesday night they were watching all the way from Hawaii Wednesday night and if I'd have known that I would have greeted them all the way from Florida and uh, they went out to celebrate their 50th wedding anniversary but they're due back home tonight and uh, we miss them when they're not here we miss you when you're not here and those that are out tonight we miss them and those that are watching via the internet we're glad that you're here tonight trust that you'll just have church with us can you say amen for that amen ushers would you come tonight give you an opportunity to worship with your tithes and with your offerings hallelujah i got to play uh pastor of another location this morning and i was actually uh preaching uh brother ml caught me he says i enjoyed that this morning brother ml and i were in the same church this morning and i got to preach over there and uh, he and pastor ricky invited me and I was doing some other things, and so we're just excited about GWC and enjoyed preaching, took my bride with me. We had a good day in the Lord over there. Let us pray. Father, love you tonight. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Pray tonight that you'll bless the offering. Let it go for its intended use. Multiply it, Lord, to meet the needs of the church. And thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for people of like precious faith. Lord, dedicated folks that week in and week out, Lord, make it a priority to be in the house of the Lord. I pray that you'll bless us now as we give of our tithes and offerings to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said Amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Amen. Thank you for your giving tonight. Do want to remind you about this coming Saturday night at 6 o'clock will be our monthly solemn assembly prayer time. I ask that you'll join us here at the main building as we uh, ask the Lord to be with us. Pray for our church and our families and our nation. And I know that God will be pleased with that as we call out to Him and ask for His intervention in all that we do tonight. We are four weeks away from homecoming. Amen. So we're celebrating 59 years and they begin to announce that a few services ago and we have at this point everything's on track. Uh, Dr. J. David Stevens, our former state overseer 
who now is the second assistant general overseer of the Church of God. Just he and his wife Joyce are precious people, and they have, it's been months ago now, back in the month of March, they uh, committed to be with us if all goes as planned for homecoming. And I talked to him again this week, and he's like, we're looking forward to being back in Okoe. So it's been a few years since he's been here. And uh, so, Doug, we'll be getting that out on our web, and it's in your bulletin. And uh, that'll be Sunday, October the 5th, the first Sunday of October. And uh, we'll have Sunday morning service. And then Sunday night, we will launch into our homecoming revival. And uh, Brother Ronnie Jarman, I call him the madman from Mississippi, amen, will be with us. He'll be actually with us that Sunday morning, it looks like. Um, Dr. Stevens will preach, but our evangelist will be in service with us. And he'll actually kick off Sunday night and go Sunday night through Friday night as we uh, get ready for our fall revival. And so I hope that you'll plan to be with us. I'm giving you plenty of notice now. Go ahead and put it on your calendar and, and uh, rearrange the, the, all the other doctor's appointments and kids' appointments and all those things that happen. I know they're important. But rearrange them and let's come that week. And if Jesus doesn't come before then, let's come that week and hear from the Lord. If Jesus comes before then, I don't plan to be here. Amen. I trust that Brother Stevens won't be here that Sunday. And I trust that Brother Jarman won't be here that Sunday. I trust that we'll be in heaven together along with you and many, many others as we celebrate uh, who our Jesus is as our Lord and as our Savior. I'm going to ask Desiree to come around tonight. She's scheduled to sing. And uh, let her minister to you in song tonight. you're thankful for who Jesus is tonight. Amen. I believe I saw Brother Clifton come in the house of the Lord tonight. Did I not see Brother Clifton? Okay, well, I must have been thinking I saw Brother Clifton come in the house of the Lord. I thought he snuck in on me. Good to see Caleb and Rebecca from over at Grace Street. Brother Caleb Stan, one of our young ministers. Rumor has it they're moving away, going to be moving back to North Carolina, and uh, I'm not sure why their pastor's letting them do that. And um, I'm sure they got pastor's blessing on it. Uh, but they didn't get my blessing on it. Amen. They didn't ask me a bit about it. And, but Brother Smith's job is taking him back. Brother Caleb, stand and greet the people tonight. Good to have you, Nokoi, with us. Amen. 
and be praying for them as they make that transition and and uh, be praying for Maddie and all those good things and you never know what God's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just before I bring the word of the Lord tonight, we're going to be going over to the book of the book of Psalms, Psalms 85, if you want to find that. And uh, for those in the sound booth, please make sure those speakers are up and turn this one down just a little bit. And uh, Psalms chapter 85. Uh, but before we uh, get into that, I do need to go ahead and make an announcement that next Sunday night after the evening service, uh, we will have a called conference. And so there's just an item of business should be pretty quick that I need to discuss with the body at large. And so I am giving notice tonight, and I'll do that again Wednesday night and Sunday morning. And it'll be in our bulletin next Sunday. But after service next Sunday night, just for a few moments, um, I'll need uh, the body to remain for a quick item of business. Next Sunday night is Journey Fellowship Night, so we will have church and then an item of business, and then we'll go fellowship. I believe we're going to Firehouse next week. And so um, it's just the way the schedule works out. It looks like next Sunday night uh, will be the appropriate time. So next Sunday night after service, uh, there will be a quick call conference for one quick item of business that I need to handle with the body. And I appreciate uh, your prayers this week regarding that and the things that are ahead of us. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word, Psalms chapter number 85. I was in a uh, lunch meeting today, and so it's just been a busy day in the work of the Lord, and I love it that way. Uh, I do send greetings from Tim and Leslie Faircloth. I spoke to them a few days ago, and uh, they said, Will you please make sure you tell all those folks in Okoye we miss them? And I said, I will do my best to remember. And uh, she was talking, Leslie was talking about all of the stuff going on. And she says, And you like it that way, you wouldn't have it any other way, would you? I said, Well, sometimes I wonder why we create all the things that we create, but I do love working for Jesus. Amen. No other thing I'd rather be doing but working for the King of Kings. Psalms chapter. 85 if you'll listen quick I'll preach quick tonight maybe okay amen Psalm somebody says pastor you didn't preach this morning so you got two in one no I preached this morning so I only got one in one tonight amen Psalms 85 verse number 6 will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee show us thy mercy O Lord and grant us thy Salvation, Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I've used this text before in a different setting, and I love this Psalms 85. It reminds us of the importance of being alive and revived. And for a little while tonight, the Lord helping me, the Holy Ghost anointing me, going to talk to us, preach to us on this thought tonight, a quest for revival. A quest for for revival. Pastor Renfro, would you pray for us tonight? Father, we're so Amen. Everybody said amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. A quest for revival. A quest or a search or a hunt or a seek or a, an attitude of going after a time of revival. No generation has ever faced more sobering times than the generation that we're living in today. We can truly say that the prophecy of Paul has been fulfilled in our eyes in our day out of 2 Timothy when he says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I believe we look on every hand we can say that perilous times are at us. Perilous this times and are upon us. The, the, our nation is morally bankrupt. Our nation is spiritually dead. Our society has has morals that have decayed. It seems that things around the world are becoming hotbeds for wars and rumors of wars. And I'm reminded of an old statement made by President Woodrow Wilson. This is what he said: Our civilization cannot survive materially unless it is redeemed spiritually. It can be saved only by becoming. 
permeated with the spirit of Christ and, and being made free and happy by the practices and, which spring out of the spirit and only thus can discontentment be driven out and all the shadows lifted from the road and, that are ahead I say Lord if there's ever a time that we need old fashioned Pentecostal revival it is in 2014 if there's ever a time that my family and your family needed to seek after revival it's the day in which we live the only cure for the ills is the revival of an old time religion amen it reminds me of the song we sung just a few moments ago now you know why I wanted to sing it I was in the office and that song just began to blow over in my spirit over and over and over it was good for mama it was good for daddy it'll take me to heaven what I need again is a move of the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life what our church needs what our world needs what our family needs is another move of old time religion can you say amen for that tonight I firmly believe that we need again revival in order to have survival here and there we will find localized or sporadic outpourings of of the Spirit of God. We'll find it here. We'll find it there. We'll read about it over there. We'll run after it to this church and we'll run after it at that church. But for the most part, people at the church world are playing church. They're honoring God with their lips and they're being Christian in name only. And I say, Lord, our nation was born out of a desire for revival. I know I've read the articles. I've heard the stories of, of those that says this nation was not born out of a Christian desire or a Christian movement I don't let that settle in my spirit because I truly believe that they were trying to find religious freedom I truly believe they were trying to find what was right and I say Lord our country was born out of a desire for revival our founding fathers practiced true Christian principles they lived moral they lived upright at home and in the business world and I say Lord why couldn't we put that back in our churches today why can't we put that back in our families today but now the sanctity of the home has been separated and desecrated by divorce and gambling and robbery and the lack of love and the lack of concern it seems that business has taken over our desire we are now after the almighty dollar we're now after the almighty materialistic gain I say Lord our only salvation our only hope my only desire my only prayer is Lord that one more time you will pour out your power and your presence in my life and in my family and in my home and that there will be a rebirth of what is called righteous God I need it in my home God I need it in my church God our nation needs it our our government needs it our families need it a proper vision of today's churches will cause one to cry out just like Psalms did in 85 and 6 revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee it seems that spiritual death has crept in upon us unawares it seems that spiritual death has moved into the ranks of the church it seems that even our church membership rosters are filled with folks that are truly unregenerated it seems that social form has taken the place of a transforming gospel it seems that old time religion has been trimmed to fit the whims of this modern liberal age it seems that we could be likened to the church of Sardis in Revelation 3 thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead I said God I don't want to live that way I don't want my kids to be raised like that. I don't want my church to be like that. I don't want my community, my neighborhood, my my state. I don't want any of that that I'm connected with to be be dead. Lord, I don't want to just have a name. I don't want to just go through the motions. But Lord, I want to have a true revival. I want to have a true outpouring. I want to have a life inside of me, something that is more than, than, than motions and more than his form. It is God's will that the church be a flame and a glow and a fire with the power of the Holy Spirit. I say, Lord, are we more concerned today with, 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 the, with the response and I'm not against football but since football is out let me just preach on football for a moment amen if you like baseball I'll preach on that in a few moments I'll get to all of them amen it ain't about a football game it ain't about baseball it ain't about golf it ain't about fishing 
It ain't about soccer and whatever other sport you want to put in there. Amen? I know some of you fish. Some of you play golf. Some of you love football. Some of you do baseball. Did I leave anything out for this congregation? Amen? I hope not because it ain't about that. It is about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It is about saying, God, if I'm going to have revival, I'm going to have to push away the plate. I'm going to have to spend some time in prayer with you. I'm going to have to realize that my forefathers had the goods and they got it by finding time in prayer. They got it by praying and fasting and seeking and I say Lord let me be concerned with the condition of our church today not how good the building looks not how pretty the campus is kept not how many programs are, are going on under the name of the church but Lord is there a true desire for revival in our hearts today Jeremiah gives the answer and my people love to have it so what does he mean what can we say where can we go with that scripture? Seems that people have been tricked or rocked to sleep by Satan until they say what Isaiah 30 and 10 says. Prophesy not unto us right things, but speak, to, speak unto us the smooth things. So God, I don't want something smooth. God, I don't want something that tickles my ear. I don't want something that pleases everybody. I don't want something that condones the wrongness of the world, the sin of the... God, I want a revival of your spirit. And if that means it steps on my toes, then I'll be the first one in the altar saying, God, here am I. Do in me what you can. Amen. Number one, this tonight, there must be, we must realize that there is in our life the plague of profession. Profession. It seems that we have... And I've used a similar thought on this. It seems that we have become great at professing what we are. Never has there been more professors of religion, but little that truly possess old time revival. God, it is not about finding my way to an altar it's not about repeating after a man the words that he or she says, says to say. But it is about truly being born again. I'm reminded of the man of God last week. As he stood in this pulpit and pre he preached deeper than some of us even realized last week. I said, God, I realize there's a cross and I realize there's a resurrection. And Lord, I want to make sure that I have been born again. Religion has become a matter of entertainment rather than a matter of earnesty. It has become a rather... A, a a form of social life than a, than, a form, than, than a life of sincerity it has become a ritual rather than that of reality I say God I can't afford to have a form I've got to have the fire of the presence of God listen to what Ezekiel 33 says and they come unto thee as thy people cometh and they set before thee as thy people and they hear thy words but they will not do them for their mouths will show much love but their heart goeth and their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a lovely, very lovely song, as one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on the instrument. For they hear the words, but they do not, but they do, but they do them not. Ezekiel is telling us, Ezekiel is reminding us that people is saying uh, that, that, that he's saying that people went to church there they sat before God they acted as if they were the people of God they heard the words of the message from the servant of God but they refused to do them and I'm reminded it's been a few weeks ago now but I preached a very similar thought to, to this thought on this first point and I said God are you burdening me again with that spirit to, with, with that thought Lord are you bringing me back to that message from uh, just a several weeks ago God I don't want to be one that just professes it with my mouth but Lord I want to be one that professes it in my heart and in my life and in my actions that it is more than a head knowledge it says that with their mouths they showed much love for God but their hearts were far from him they were ones that would be quick to be entertained but they were not ones that wanted to do the words of the Lord so you need to realize that we have a plague of profession of professing and we have a plague of those that say, oh, I'm a Christian. But what does it truly mean to be a Christian? Oh, I'm a Christian, Pastor. But have you looked it up, what it means to be a Christian? Oh, I'm a disciple of Christ. Are you really? 
Preacher and the pastor. Pastor, are you really? A disciple. Christ. Number two tonight, what we're dealing with a lot in our churches is we have programs without power. Programs without, without power. Realizing that the need exists, churches, ours is no different. Looks for ways to reach folks. Sometimes we attempt to do it without the power of the presence of the Lord. I often tell young ministers, myself included, whatever it takes to attract them to your church, it will take to keep them. If you attract them with likes, and, and uh, I learned something new this week. I grew up calling on fog machines. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay. There's no, there's no fog machines on this campus that I'm aware of. And there's definitely none in this sanctuary. Amen. Not for worship. And, but I learned this week. We don't call them fog machines anymore. That's, not, that's the old term. We call them haze machines. Just let the haze move across. the. It's a bunch of hogwash is what it is. And if it takes lights and, lights and haze machines to get them in, you have to keep lights and haze machines to keep them in, in the pew. But if you have a true move of the Spirit of God and the power of God gets a hold of their life and they realize that they're a sinner and they realize that they need Jesus, the same Spirit of God that convicted them and drew them to an altar of prayer is the same Spirit of God that can keep them. Can you say amen for that tonight? Many and varied programs are being launched to fulfill the need. I don't argue against programs. I love programs. Programs. I love organization. I love things for youth. And I love things for kids. But many of the efforts that we expend on those are, are, are done in the church world as an effort to replace revival. It's done as a way to, uh, to, f- to, to fill a gap. And I say, God, we cannot fill the gap. We cannot fill the void of a lack of revival by programs. There must be what one way to fill it. And that's a, a, a quest for revival. That is a, a desire to go seek out the Lord. Revival cannot be organized. Revival does not come through method. God does not rain His Spirit upon the programs or the machinery or the events. But revival comes in response to the cry of a humble heart that simply says, Here am I, O God. Would you one more time touch me? Isaiah 57. God says that He will revive the spirit of the humble and He will revive the heart of the contract ones. Throughout history, God has had some men who were willing to cry from broken hearts of concern for revival. And I said, Lord, would you give us some men and some women in this, in this congregation that will lay around this altar tonight. And God, they will seek your face and they will earnestly call out to you for revival in our families and in our nation tonight. Number three tonight, we also need to have some preachers that will plead preachers who plead the church is in dire need of men of God who will plead to God on behalf of the people Ezra pled to Ezra pled for the people of God when he saw their affinity with the world and their association with sin he humbled his soul with fasting he sat before God allow me to read to you in Ezra 9 6 through 8 what he said oh my God I am ashamed and blush to lift my face to thee. For our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespass is grown up into the heavens. And since the days of our fathers, we have been in a great trespass unto this day. And for our iniquities, we have our kings and our priests. We've been delivered into the hands of the kings of the lands, and to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusion. And it is this day, for now, For now a little space grace has been showed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. I said, oh God, what we need again is men that will plead on behalf of the church, men that will plead on behalf of their families. We need some wives that will get up under the burden and say, I'm not going to bed until Jesus hears my cry I'm not going to give up this battle until my son saved or until my daughter saved or until this bondage that we're in is broken I'm not going to just say one prayer and give it up but no I'm going to plead I'm going to plead or I'm going to beg or I'm going to go after the Lord and I'm going to be the men of old and I'm going to say God do you not see our iniquity God do you not see our sin God will you not revive us one more time God will you not pour out your power and your presence 
And will you not hear our cry, O Lord? Speaking from Joel chapter number 1. Here's his quest. Be ashamed of ye husbandmen. How and O ye vine dressers. For the wheat and for the barley. Because the harvest of the field is perished. Say God, I don't believe it's too late for America. I don't believe it's too late for your family. I don't believe it's too late for my family. I don't believe it's too late for my kids or your kids. God, would you one more time give us some, some men of God. Give us some, some saints of God. Give us some, some wives and some leaders that will make it a matter of prayer. And they will plead to you for a revival in our church. Number four tonight, we need to have preaching that points. Preaching that points. What do you mean by that, Pastor? We need to have preaching that points a soul to revival. Listen to me. Any church that is not willing to accept pen, that is not willing to accept pointed, passionate preaching can never expect to have a soul searching revival. If you don't ever want to hear things from this pulpit from me or other men of God that sometimes step on our toes, then we will never have a soul searching revival. Revival cannot come when the church is one that winks at sin and becomes tolerant to sin. Sin cannot be powdered. Sin cannot be galvanized. Sin cannot be whitewashed. Sin is to be dealt with in our lives. And if we live close enough to God, His Spirit will tell us exactly where it's at. His Spirit will tell us exactly how to deal with it. And any church that can tolerate sin and not be ashamed and not blush before God about it will need not expect a revival because God and His Spirit will not deal, will not dwell in the hearts of those that have sin. I know the tendency of today is to be tolerant. I know the tendency of today is to say, we'll just open our doors and let sin come in and let God deal with them. But one cannot show the least degree of tolerance towards sin and have an approval of the almighty God yes I love the sinner yes they need Jesus yes we need to show them the way but we must love them and we must pray for them and we must preach them to Calvary and we must plead for their soul and we must show them the error of their way through love and through mercy and through grace and I say God give me somebody again that I can wrap my arm around and I can help them realize that if they don't change their way they're going to die and go to a devil's hell a hell that was never created for them a hell that they'll be going to as a trespasser I say God give us some men and some women some moms and some dads that through their life and through their discipline lead people back to Calvary pastor you mean I have a role in this I thought when you said preaching that points you're talking about those guys and those ladies on the platform no I am talking about them but I'm talking about you as well those that our life is an open book those that our life is ones that others read our life is that that preaches to them I said God would you one more time give us some men and some women that will preach and teach and direct people back to Calvary the New Testament church the church that we read about in our scriptures, the church uh, 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 of, of the apostles was a church of revival. It was an intolerant church. Sin was treated as a stranger. And when the church becomes ashamed enough of her sins to blush, then and only then will it repent of its sins. I say, God, if there be any sin in my life, forgive me of it. Churches today, as the Corinthian church, are committing sins and yet refuse to be ashamed about it. I say, Lord, don't let us be puffed up people. Don't let my family or your family or the family by you be puffed up people. Don't let this church be a puffed up church don't let the church down the road be a puffed up church Lord let us be people that have a willing heart and a willing vessel to do whatever we can to lead people to Calvary churches that are puffed up because of their high ranking membership can never have revival when finances figure into the picture and favoritism is shown for financial gain you can expect revival will never come we must realize that finances never control the church because we march to a different beat can you say amen for that tonight 
not. We don't get our orders from thus saith the FDIC. We get our orders from thus saith the Lord. I say, God, your word has given me a command. It is to go and to reach all of those that I can for you. And Lord, when I don't know where it's coming from, I got to trust that you've got it all in the palm of your hands. Lord, it doesn't cost me much to stay on the side of the road and holler, repent, repent for the day of the Lord is at hand. I say, God, give us a burden one more time to have people who plead and to have preachers, men and women and moms and dads that point their families back to Jesus. And social standing, positions are determining factors. Operations of churches, revival will never come. But only as people lay bare their souls before God and make heartfelt confession of their shortcomings. Only when they realize that they've sinned and ask God to forgive them will God smile upon them. The ministry must cry out against the sins of the church regardless of the consequences. The Bible says, cry aloud, Isaiah 58, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. Now if you study that out, you will find that Isaiah is talking about his own people. It says very plainly in Scripture, and show my people. He's talking about the religious people. He's talking about those that he's in contact with. It says in verse 2, yet they seek me daily. In other words, they drew near to God with their mouth, but their hearts were far from him. Some of them even fasted, but they were filled with strife, and they were filled with debate. And in, in, in the, the injunction to Isaiah was to cry aloud was to spare not was to lift up his voice was to say God would you one more time show the people their transgressions I said God Sunday night a rainy Sunday night when the ducks are here amen I had to waddle into the water tonight I said God I believe there's a few folks that still want to have true revival I believe there's a few folks that it doesn't matter what it costs on this side of heaven. They want true revival. I preached this morning a simple thought. Simply entitled, What Makes Heaven? Heaven. And I think I might have preached it here several years ago. What Makes Heaven? I was in my office last night. And I was uh, saying, Lord, you know I got to go preach in the morning. God, I don't know what you want. You know how preachers are. I mean, I'm just crying. I asked the Lord to help me. Been wor- not worried. Been contemplating this whole week. God, what do you have for me on Sunday morning for these people? And I get to church this morning. The first song they sing is uh, Soon and Very Soon. I thought, yes, Lord, I'm on the right track. Amen. Soon and very soon we're going to see the King. Oh, then they sung, oh, I want to see him. And they finished with another one. I thought, Lord, thank you for that confirmation. I preached my heart out this morning. What makes heaven heaven? It's not the streets of gold. It's not those things that we read about. I realize there's some things that's not going to be there. There won't be pain. There won't be fear. There, there, there won't be sickness. There, 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 there won't be the curse. All of those things. And I said, Lord, but even that, that's important. But God, what makes heaven heaven is simply that your son is there. And I get to worship him forever and ever and ever. And I said, Lord, if I don't help somebody realize the era of their way. If I don't help somebody realize that there's a sin in their life if I don't help somebody realize that they're going to a devil's hell they're not going to make it to heaven and they will spend I say God would you one more time show the house of the Lord the condition that we are in now I'm preaching to myself if you're here you need to listen but I'm preaching to me God show us the condition of our own life responsibility is heavy upon us I hope Jesus doesn't tarry long. It would be okay with me if he come before my kids graduate or get married. Why? Because as they get older and I get older, I'm just not liking the idea they're going to grow up. I'm just not liking it at all. My son reminds me how many days, Titus? 11 days, he'll be 13. He knows it well. Mariah reminded me today, Daddy, exactly two months from today I will be nine. Okay, I'm just not ready for all that. Some of you have been down that path and you survived. So I know I will too, but I'm not liking it one bit. Amen. Cherry, I won't pick on you tonight. Amen. I'll leave you alone. Say, God, be okay with me if you come tonight. God, if you won't, I want my kids to know what's right. And I want my kids to know how to live for Jesus. I want them to know there's a heaven to gain. 
and there's a hell to shun. I want them to know they can't play, not just my kids, but I want your kids and your grandkids and your nieces and your nephews and you young married folks and some of us older married folks. We need to know that we have a true desire for revival in our life. And if we don't, we'll be no different than the church up the street. We will be rocked to sleep at ease in Zion. And when Jesus rings the bell or comes or calls and the trumpet sounds, I'm not so sure that we'll just sit right here. I say, God, I need revival. God, if they don't want it on the front row, I still need it. God, if the back row won't, don't want it, I still need it. God, if they want to, I heard this morning y'all loaded the back of the church first. That's what I heard this morning. Somebody told me, Pastor, it was good. Pastor Renfro preached a great job, but we were, we were back heavy. They loaded the back pews first. It was, it was sporadic. I'm glad y'all moved up some tonight. Amen. And so I say, Lord, if the back rows don't want it, if the front row, if the middle rows don't want it, I need revival in my life. Before revival can come, the church must show concern. Concern must, re must replace the indifference. Concern must replace the lukewarmness. People must become concerned enough to weep over the desperate conditions of the times that we are in. It seems almost weekly, sometimes multiple times a week, you hear of things happening in people's lives that you have to just say, I don't understand. How did that happen? Where did they go astray? Why did they give in to sin or temptation or whatever it is? But can I tell you, if it wasn't for the grace of God, it could be you and I tonight as well. I said, God, let me cry. Let me plead. Let me pray. Let me seek after you. Let me have a true quest for revival. Listen to what David said in Psalms 119. When David saw a vision of the lawlessness, he yearned for revival, saying this, It is time for thee, Lord, to work. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. I have opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. Rivers of water flow down mine eyes, because they kept not thy law. Say, God, First of all, I want to be man enough like David was to be able to say with an honest heart that I've opened up my heart and I've had rivers run down my face because I have pleaded and I have prayed for my own family and my own nation and my own church. But God, after I do my part, then we're going to trust you to do your part. God, after I've done my part, God, it's going to be, I'm going to be like David in Psalms 119. It is time for thee, Lord. To work. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. I say, God, you're ready. You're waiting on us. God, you're ready. You're waiting on the church. God, you're ready. You're waiting on Okoe Church of God. God, I don't want you waiting on me. I don't want to get to heaven and find out he had more for me if I'd have just pushed a little bit harder, Pastor Ricky. I don't want to wait. I don't want to get to heaven and realize that he had more for us and for my family. And one more could have been saved. And one more could have been, could have been redeemed. And one more could have been blood bought. If I'd have just pleaded. If I'd have just preached. If I'd have just had power. If I'd have just sought God one more time. And tonight we're going to do that. It's early. It's early. It's early. God, we're going to lay on our faces tonight before you. And we're going to seek the Lord. God, we're going to lay on our faces before you tonight and we're going, to, we're going to seek after. God, I need you more than I've ever needed you before. Sister Wendy, would you come? Father, I love you tonight. This afternoon, Lord, my heart was stirred again for a true move of your power. God, as I was at the house and then in my office, God, as I begin to meditate upon you and the word of the day that we shared this morning, God, realizing the times in which we're living, Lord, the, the responsibility is great. It is heavy. It is overwhelming. 
God, I realize tonight all I have to do is seek after you. Seek ye first, seek ye first, seek ye first. God, and you will take care of the rest of it. God, in order to do that, I must, I must disagree with the things that you disagree with. I must love the things that you love. I must speak out against the things that are directly, Lord, in opposition to the things of your word. God, I must be willing to tell a person, Lord, their sin is sin and, and it won't send them to heaven, but it will send them to hell. I must love them in a way that I plead I plead that they will give their heart and their life to Jesus. Lord, allow me tonight to be an example of one that truly has a quest for revival. Lord, allow me tonight to be one that truly has a desire to see you revive us one more time. I don't want to go through motions. I don't want to go through formalities. I don't want to pray a little now. I'll lay me down to sleep prayer. God, I want to commune with the Most High. And I want to ask tonight that you speak to us in a way that you haven't spoke to us in a long time. And let us see ourselves as you see us. Let us see ourselves, God, as you see us. With the desire of our heart to be transformed to that that you have for us to be. We will forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I'm going to ask tonight, would you come? It's just a few minutes after seven. And can we honestly, honestly spend some time in prayer? I'm going to encourage pastors and staff to come to this platform and let's labor for the Lord. Let's find us a place. Let's leave room in these altars. Young people, it's not a time to talk. It's a time to pray. If you're in this church, you need to pray. We need revival. You need it in your schools. You need it in your homes. You need it in your careers. You need it in your families. And tonight, would you come and let's gather around. And let's say, God, would you give us true revival? Would you give us?